Hello everybody and welcome to Diamond Leander here in Leander, Texas. We are at Leander High School where the home team, the Lions, will host the Liberty Hill Panthers in this 5A Region 4 District 25 matchup. Should be a good one. Looking forward to it. I'm here embedded amongst the Panthers fans here at the Diamond at Leander. Sun's starting to set off to the right of your screen there, but we have a lot of wind. It is very windy, and it certainly was difficult here in the stands get, getting all papers together, getting getting everything sorted so it wouldn't blow away, but it should play a factor in this game, too. There, the wind, I think, is just about blowing across the field, so we could see some strange fly ball situations should be interesting no matter what happens just about ready to go here as Panthers come up to the plate Lions in that white jersey with the the blue and red numbers and trim and the Panthers in those really cool yellow jerseys with the purple lettering with that white trim. Of course, this is the final week of the regular season for these two teams. And it is a significant game. We'll talk about that in a moment here. And leading off here is Number 12, Logan Dyer. He is the designated hitter tonight. On the on his left side there. We'll start the game. We're just about ready here. Should be a good one. As for the Lions, it's number 17, Harrison Thayer. To pitch for the home team. And there's a strike down the middle. Looks like Dyer showed bunt on that left side, righty versus lefty here. Really nice night for baseball. Other than that wind, and he does bunt this time and keeps it fair, and it's beautiful. And he is safe at first, despite a really nice try of Flores over at third. That's Lucas Flores. So a nice bunt by the designated hitter, something that you don't see a lot at, at the top level is designated here who lays down a bunt. We'll bring up the catcher, number 28, Carson Riley. How about on that right side. Thayer looks over at first. We'll see what kind of speed Dyer has over there. He'll also bunt. Puts a little too much air under that, but it goes foul. Interesting strategy here early on from coach Steve Hutcherson in his 12th year with the Panthers. A little small ball going on here early. There looks in, 0-1 count. He'll go over to first just to check on Dyer there. Talked about how significant this game is. Both these teams the Panthers tied for first in this district. Here comes Thayer, the 0-1, and it's a beautiful piece of hitting there by Carson Riley. Two up, two on for the Panthers. And at first and second here, and a nice rhythm already. For a team 20 and five overall. It's the best overall record in the district, and Riley, the catcher will come out of the game. And just fumbling here with my roster through the wind. It's a uh, uh, sophomore, Sean Parsons, to pinch hit. You can hear the, I'm sure you can hear the softball PA over there, softball stadium, just over the that outfield wall there. Up there. Put the pitch a little bit high. 1-0. Oh. 
And this is number 24, Cash Durkin. First baseman for the Panthers. Two men on, no out. Big opportunity here. It's a lefty. They ground it, and it hits the runner. And he is out by rule. But they do have runners at first and third. Probably would have loaded the base if it gets through. Maybe even score the runner from third. And a tough break there for the Panthers. <laughs> the only out so far is uh, the teammates hitting each other with a ground ball. So Parsons just gets a moment at first and comes back in. They're taking his time. And the umpire's going over there to talk to Coach Hutcherson just to clarify what the rule is here. So no advancement of the runner. So Dyer is going to have to go back to second. And this is number 10, Kate Neuenschwander. He's got a great name. He'll, he'll be pitching tonight and batting cleanup. He pops that one straight up. Might have a play here, and that'll fade. Out behind the Lions dugout. So they are still looking for an out, an earned out, you could say. And he's got his opposite number here at the plate. Interesting here for the, the Panthers. They have left, lefty, righty, lefty, righty. Uh, which is going to be difficult for any pitching staff. And Thayer with the 0-1. Looked good, but it is a ball. There with the 1-1, one, one out. Runners go. Swing, and it is a foul tip. So runners will go back. Aggressive base running there for the Panthers. As that wind blows across there. I'm sure you can hear it in the mic. One two pitch. From there to Neuenschwander, it's a big pitch, so he'll look over at second there. Probably a smart play there by the pitcher. He's, cannot be sure after that aggressive call by Coach Hutcherson. Looks over, here's the pitch. Neuenschwander takes that one outside, good eye. From number 10 for the Panthers. Wonder is a junior. That one's low and full count now. To New Inch Wander. Two men on. One out here. Top of the first just got started. Sun's starting to set there. Over to your right. As runners go. And that'll be a walk, so that'll load them up. They are still looking to earn an out here. There is one out. It was a ground ball that hit a base runner for the Panthers, but they have loaded them up. And we do have another pinch runner as New and Schwander will go ahead back to the dugout and warm himself up to start on the mound for the Panthers. And that's number 32, Colton Rutherford, another sophomore, in there to pinch run. This is right fielder Colby DeMars with the bases loaded, one out. And there with the pitch. Looked a little bit high there on the breaking ball. And it is 1 0. with one out. Bases loaded. Just outside there on the fastball. Now 2-0 and a hitter's count. DeMars who got a big opportunity here. And 
there's a rip down the line, and it's fair. And this might empty the bases. One run scores, two run scores, three runs will score. And Kobe DeMars with a three run double here in the top of the first. How's that to start the game for the Panthers? A nice piece of hitting by Kobe DeMars, the right fielder. And this big Panthers crowd loves that. Base is empty there with the double. Great start for Liberty Hill. Now second baseman Trent Eller will step to the plate. Still just that one out on that ground ball that hit Parsons over between first and second. So they are still trying to earn an out here. There's a strike. Tough way to start it. Or Harrison Thayer. He is a sophomore. A young fella having some early troubles. That one just a bit high. One and one now. And that pitch, I think, hit the, the bill of his helmet. And so he'll take the free base. Two men on now. Right there, he's really struggling. I'll talk to Caden Sisson, his catcher. I think everybody will get together here for the lines. Maybe just give there a moment. Garrett Neely, the shortstop, up next. He's talking to Coach Hutcherson. I have two men on, first and second, one out. Three runs already home. And Neely, the shortstop, will step in. Driving a couple more. Cotton playing with the runner at second. And pitch from there shows bunt again. You remember those first and second batters we saw in this inning showed bunt. And it's turned into a good decision. Two of those runners have come home. And here's a full swing there. Driven out to center. And at that moment, there was no wind. He'll throw back in. And DeMars will advance from second to third. So, that's a sacrifice fly ball. Very interesting moment there. It's a well hit ball. First, really sort of pop up kind of hit we've had in this game, and the wind did not catch it. Should see something in this game here. The wind should have an effect. This is number seven, Jack Stavanoa. Rips it hard down the first base line. Another lefty here. He's the center fielder. Credit on that last play goes to Adam Salazar, the center fielder. He played it pretty well. 0-1, oh, two out. Man at third and first. And Harrison there, he'll go over to first. And he's got to watch the runner at third in that kind of situation. Stavanoa. I'll watch that one. By for ball one, so one on one now from there. The Panthers with the early lead, also in a four-way tie for first place in this district. Ah, that's a nice breaking ball there off the top of the plate. One, two, count now. They share that lead 
with Georgetown Cedar Park and Rouse. Really interesting situation at the top of this district. And runner went, and Thayer saw it a little bit late, and his throw to second went past the bag. And DeMars will score easily from third. And just to compound what happened earlier in this inning, Thayer throws a little bit late, a little bit casual. And aggressive base running again from the Panthers, 4-0 now. there and that's strike three looking and Harrison there gets out of the inning but the Panthers put four on the board in the top of the first you're watching the Liberty Hill Panthers and Lander Lions on five sports here at the diamond at Leander. On this windy Friday night here. And Leander will look to respond here. It's the left fielder Caden Wheatley up to bat. And Neuenschwander Getting on base in the top half, will pitch here, and that's in there for a strike from the righty. Aggressive pitching there, over to third, got through. We'll get to the shortstop, though. He makes a good attempt at it. Uh, got past Maldonado and nearly had a shot at it, and a decent play by Durkin, too, just to keep it in front of him. But Beatley does get on. That's the second baseman, Andrew Buentello, up to bat. Does have a man on here. Lions looking to respond after giving up four at the top of the first inning. And that one's in there for a strike with the breaking ball. Nice looking pitch. I'm sure you can hear that wind. Blowing across there. Yes. Which wonder. Checks first base. Again, those four runs. Three of those on the DeMars double. And there's a nice little hit over the opposite field. Should go in the corner. And Wheatley will go to third. Right fielder fell down. And he will go all the way. Wheatley's going to score from first. Looked like DeMars slipped there in the corner. And it's a RBI double for Andrew Buentello. And a nice response from the home team, the Lions. Two batters up, one run in, man on second. And now it's Jaron Cotton 
The shortstop up to bat. And he's swinging too. Aggressive uh, hitting for this Lions lineup so far. They've been swinging a lot of pitches. And likewise, Neuenschwander's been going right after him. Pitch from Neuenschwander, a little bit low. It's a nice stop by the Riley, the catcher. 1-1 one, one now. And the pitch here, ripped up the middle. Should be a play at first, juggled by the shortstop. Neely and I think the shortstop will be credited there with a an error. Some issues here fielding for the Panthers and no out. Men on the corners and Coach Hutcherson will come out and talk to his pitcher. So lots of action in this first inning. We had several hits there in the top half of that first. But Couple, had a bunt single, a single, a grounder that hit a base runner, and then a huge double that scored three runs. And now, Cade Neuenschwander having some trouble, just like his counterpart. One run already home, no out. Men on the corners. And Dylan Capers, the cleanup hitter, the first baseman for the Lions. You can see the kind of height that he has. Newt Schwander's going to check first. Newt Schwander goes over to. Wow, that was a close play. Oftentimes, don't see a pitcher get closer to the runner on the second attempt, but that was really close. Of course, that umpire over at second base, maybe not the best position on a call like that. There's that breaking ball, so good in there for a strike. Beautiful looking pitch there. Schwander with the 0-1, and it's a big cut there down the line. Foul lost that one in the lost that one in the sun. Looks like it didn't get over the fence though. We got a player going over there to retrieve the ball, but that was pretty close. See the power of Dylan Capers. And wind continues to blow. 0-2 now from Neuenschwander. That one's in the dirt. Nice play from Riley and good aggressive base running. Both these teams really aggressive on the bases. Jaron Cotton takes second. Now two men in scoring position. No out. Lions looking to respond in kind with the Panthers' four-run top half. Now the pitch to Capers. Oh, looked very close. 2-2 two -two now. Wind just seems to be blowing even harder now. Onto your hats here. 2-2, two, two, no out. Big cut there by Capers. And that is their home plate umpire is going to call this foul. Really close over a third. Maxwell was right in front of the runner who almost got in his way there. But just about goes foul. And maybe a break there for the Panthers. As that one was rolling into the corner and might have been two more runs. Here for the Capers, big cut. This one into the corner, this might fade foul as well. It does. There's that wind, sort of pushed it. Wind sort of pushed that ball in. And it sort of lost its momentum. Still 2-2. Two -two. The Lions clean up hitter. Schwander will deliver. And a 
another big cut. He's going to foul it off again. So good at bat from the first baseman, Dylan Capers. The senior, he is listed at 6'4". Just about as tall as they come at this level. Good eye there. Now full count. That one in the dirt. Three and two, New Schwander certainly being made to work here. Three, two. Big pitch now to Capers. And that one in the dirt, that will load him up. And now number 22, third baseman Lucas Flores in a big spot, still no out. Base is loaded. Flores, the lefty, looking to capitalize. Big cut. That foul's over by us. That's why they've got the net there. Flores, the third baseman for the Lions. Another big cut, man. Lots of foul balls from this Lions team. Careful with the cars out there. That might... Uh, I think that actually did hit a car. I hear a I hear a car horn out there. Hopefully everybody's okay. Hopefully it's not my car. O2. A little bit high. One and two now. Everybody. I think everybody's sort of checking. Make sure it's not their car. One two pitch now from Neunschwander. Yeah. Just off. 2-2. And these Lions hitters doing a good job laying off pitches with two strikes. That's what Capers did. And now Flora is doing the same thing. Now big cut. That'll go foul. So another tough at bat here for New and Schwander to deal with. You can hear that PA softball game. The Ander girls playing tonight as well. Pitch from Nunchwander. And he just chased the breaking ball. And it's a big out for the Panthers. First out of the inning. And Flores strikes out at the bases load at Damian Stout. The designated hitter in the game. He is batting for the pitcher. And there's a strike from Nunschwander. So David Stout is batting for the pitcher there. Of course, the Panthers do it a little bit different. They have the DH bat for the third baseman. And that pitch fouled off. Now 0-2, and Nunschwander, like he has been with the past two hitters, up 0-2. See if he can. Deliver with Stout at the plate. He's got a good rhythm to his pitches. There's a grounder. This could be two. And Maldonado makes a great play. Still got to get him out. Does tag him. And it's a big double play for the Panthers. Maldonado with some great defense. And Riley kept his head up. And it was a good attempt by Buentello to avoid the tag. But he does get him eventually. And they get out of the inning with only one run across. And that'll be the first inning, an action-packed first inning. The visiting Liberty Hill Panthers still hold that 4-1 lead. Here, this is High School Baseball on Five Sports.
we're back here at the Diamond at Leander, watching the Leander Lions varsity baseball team host Liberty Hill Panthers. Haven't had much time to talk about what's going on in this district. Really good rhythm from both teams. Lots of action in that first inning. Panthers with the 3-1 lead, and Harrison Thayer is going to try and get into a rhythm. Big cut there, out in the gap, but it's a good play there by Seaman over in right field. So one pitch, one out by Thayer. That's a much better start for him. That's Chase Maxwell that drove that ball out. Now we're back to the top of the order with Logan Dyer. And that's a strike there from Thayer, who may be getting a little bit more confidence after that shaky first. He has a sophomore, like we said, 0-1. And Dyer way ahead of that one, 0-2 now. Dyer started off that wild top half of the first with a bunt single, a beautiful bunt down this third baseline. You can see Flores is in a little bit tighter now. And full cut there, it popped it out over to short. And there's that wind. I don't know if it was the wind or what happened, but Caden Wheatley lost it. I think that's almost a shortstop's ball there, so short. Of course, if the left fielder calls it, it is his ball. And I wonder, I do wonder if it's the wind. I, I, at that exact moment, I didn't feel it. But it did drop. And now it's Carson Riley. In there for a strike, strike one. Like I said, so, so windy. Tonight, 0-1, oh, one, one out now from Harrison Thayer. You can see, I don't know what that is, maybe some plastic wrapper blown across the field. Of course, Riley got on in the first inning and then had Parsons pinch run for him and then Parsons was the, almost immediately hit by a ground ball and was forced out first out of that first inning and it took, it took the Lions a while to get the second out after that. We had four more runs and there's more aggressive base running from the Panthers as Dyer was running. Of course a big game for both teams. A win tonight for the Panthers would clinch a playoff berth because they would be far enough ahead of the Lions in district and would be guaranteed a top four place in this district. Uh, so a playoff berth would be guaranteed. That one's fouled away. One and two now to Riley. Again, the Panthers in that four-way tie for first. They're eight and three in district. <clears throat> the Lions are fifth in district. Excuse me. Six and five. That breaking ball just a bit outside now, so two and two. Sun starting to set. Now over the field, floodlights are on. Runner goes again, and it's a little hit and run, and it works beautifully because Logan Dyer will get to third. And aggressive hitting and base running from the Panthers works really well. Uh, I would assume Parsons will come in again for Riley, and he does. And just like in that first inning, those top two hitters for the Panthers do their job and get on base. And Cash Durkin up to bat. Of course, he was the hitter that drove the ball that hit Parsons 
in the first inning, and Parsons over there at first again. He'll try and avoid any ground balls that head his way this inning. Boy, that wind just getting more and more fast. Coming across, checks the runner at first. Of course, has to be aware of the runner at third as well. For Leander, that's a big game tonight as well because they just want to stay in the running for the playoff. They pretty much have to win. And there's the cut from Dirk, and it's another tough one in the wind. And Flores makes a nice play. And I think on, a, on an ordinary night, that's pretty routine, but on a night like tonight, we have got all kinds of blustery wind. That's tough, and he was sort of on his back foot there, but made a good play. So new and Schwander. Now up to bat. He walked and really good at bat in that first inning against his opposite number. Still men on the corners. Two outs now, though, for Thayer. He'll go over to first. Big game for both teams. Theoretically, the Lions could still make the playoffs if one of Rouse, Georgetown, or Cedar Park loses tonight and then loses their next two. You wouldn't expect that from one of those three other top teams in the district. So you'd have to think it's kind of a must win for the Lions, not mathematically. And that pitch in there for a strike, one and one now. Two out, men on the corners. Newman Schwander he just bat the pitch from there outside. And Kate Sisson behind the plate. Obviously worried about the runners. Two and one now the count. And runner from first goes. And interesting decision there from Sisson. The catcher doesn't go to second. More aggressive base running. That's Parsons. Gets over to second. And you can tell Coach Hutcherson likes his team. Steal some bases. Three and one. Batters count here. Two out pitch from Thayer. Nice fastball. Just threw it by him. You can see that was one of those pitches you pitchers not even looking at the end because he's throwing so hard. Full count, two out. They are right back into his motion. Both pitchers do not take any time to get back in their set. And that pitch outside, and Neuenschwander has drawn two walks. runner. I think that was Colton Rutherford. So two pinch runners up there. And Tell me if this looks familiar. Colby DeMars up to the plate. Base is loaded. And first pitch in there for a strike. Of course in the first inning it was a three RBI double. Part of the reason, big part of the reason the Panthers had this 4-1 lead. There with that Good first pitch, and second pitch just as good. Breaking ball just crept over the plate real slow. And now he's ahead of the batter, 0-2. We haven't seen this a whole lot from Thayer. Hasn't gotten ahead of the Panthers hitters too much in this game. Big spot here, though, and a swing and a miss, and a big strikeout for the sophomore who gets out of a really tough situation. And Another run from going across the plate. We'll go to the bottom of the second. Panthers still lead 4-1 over the Lions. You're watching Five Sports.
to the bottom of the second now. You can hear the wind. It keeps blowing. And there's a little pop out into center field. And it's a nice play from the center fielder there, Jack Stabanoa. And pops out for one out on that first pitch. That's a big out for Neuenschwander who struggled to get guys out in that first inning. Did get that big double play in the bottom half of the first. And we'll go and swing and almost like a bunt there with the old chopper. And a good play by the pitcher. Two quick outs. Two pitches, two outs. That was number eight, Nate Seaman, the right fielder. Now it's the uh, center fielder, Adam Salazar. Again, clear, aggressive orientation here. But the Lions are swinging it a lot. And that one up the middle, and Neuenschwander's not afraid to throw strikes. First hitter we've seen this inning to not swing at the first pitch. And that one in the dirt, one and one. This is Adam Salazar, the junior. And that's in there from the strike from Neuenschwander. One, two, just a little bit off. Two, two, two out. Now from New and Twander, there's the pitch, and I think that got him. So Salazar will get on base. Just about everything has happened in this game. Both teams have had batters hit by pitch. We'll go to the top of the order, Caden Wheatley, who, who yeah, you're, you're, you're okay, I just, there is a computer behind you, just to let you know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, no worries. And first pitch low there to Caden Wheatley. did get on base and in the bottom of the first with the single and he did get around. He was, represents that, that run for the Lions. Now a little bit of a different situation here. One and one, two out, bottom second. And that one low, ball two. These two teams have faced off earlier in the season. It was a close one. Swing and a miss, now two and two, two out. Of course that game was at Liberty Hill and the home team came out with a 5-4 walk-off win. It was Colby DeMars who's got those three RBI in the first inning of the walk-off hit. Send the Panthers to the win over the Lions. So you expect another even game here. Of course, the Panthers at the top of the district rankings. Now it's a full count here to Wheatley. Salazar over there at first. Moonschwander with a big side, but boy, for a righty, he has quite the move over to first and caught Salazar unaware and not even a slide there but he got him so that'll end the second inning still four to one Panthers
Gardner back here, top of the third. Panthers back to bat here. And this is Trent Eller, who was the Panthers player is hit by a pitch in the first inning. He looks at a ball. One and one. Scoreboard just had to catch up there. And Harrison Thayer trying to get through an inning without trouble here. Did get through that second without giving up a run, but bases were loaded. Of course, the four runs in the first. And a good cut there by Eller, and Flores can't handle it at third. And again, he got through Flores, but Cotton makes a good attempt over at short. Can't quite make the play on Eller, who gets on again. Now batting number two, Garrett Neely. Uh, scoreboard's official score now, crediting the lines of three errors. And that's really tough, especially on the grounder. You want to make a good play. I think in these conditions, you expect maybe some variability with the fly balls. But. You got to make a play there. And showing bunt and fouling there is Garrett Neely. He flew out in that action packed first inning. Shortstop. There goes that wind again. Just imagine trying to keep, keep your notes in order in this wind like this. Neely is committed to UT Dallas. So the senior will go play Division Three baseball next year. Really good to hear that from him. Ball outside through the first pretty close. I think Capers thought that was close and Peyton Sisson thought it was out as well. You can see by his face here. 2-2 two, two now. And big cut. Fouled straight back. and Thayer, again in a little bit of a tough spot, sophomore pitcher for Leander. team. Good this year, runner goes, and another really well executed hit and run. I don't think Eller's quite got the speed to uh, make it over to third, but Garrett Neely gets on, no out to him, and on there again in trouble. Jack Stavanoa, the center fielder, who struck out in the first the bat, the lefty. Just mentioning the Panthers. Interestingly enough, last year they were not a playoff team. Eight and six in district, and the improvement has certainly been noticeable here this season. And Riley's going to go out to second. The ball gets away from Cotton, and maybe a faster runner will try third there. Eller decided to stay in the moment. Apologies, that's Caden Sisson, who's behind the plate for the Lions. Of course, Carson Riley, his opposite number. Still 1-0, no out. And the pitch 
from there. Another great bunt. And this might be enough. And Jack Stavanoa has loaded the bases again. Boy, these Panthers players have really mastered those bunts down the third base line. Not something you see a lot, especially from the lefties. And now the number nine hitter, Chase Maxwell. Left fielder, big opportunity, big cut. Flores having trouble with it, bounces off of them. And a run will score. Eller comes home. And I think that's just going to be another error, unfortunately. Really hot ground ball over to third there. But Flores not able to handle it. And bases will stay full as we go top of the order. And Logan Dyer, who's already been on base twice. And that breaking pitch a little bit outside. So Harrison Thayer really going through the mixer here. As Cotton just checking on his pitcher infield in with no out. Top three, pitch from Thayer, a little bit high. And some Lions fans thought that was a strike. Again, that bunt single in the first. And then another single in the second, sort of a result of an error. This one popped down the line. There is a play there. And just goes foul. in front of the wall. One run scores. You got two runners are right behind each other and those two runners will score and it is a three RBI triple for Logan Dyer who continues his dominant night and for the second time in this game and the second time in three innings Liberty Hill Panthers clear the bases. And Of course, are the visitors, but they showed out really well tonight. Loves that. And it is now 8 to 1 Panthers. And Coach Matthew Grissom is going to take out his sophomore starting pitcher, uh, who had a tough outing. But you, know, you got to respect the effort by the young fella. Your head up. And this looks like it's number 10 here. And Max Kreitz who will step on the mound. Just confirm that. Yeah, it's Max Kreitz, the junior. Pretty simple on the scorebook because Kreitz is just substituting for the pitcher, as of course they are not not batting in this game. As I got my scorecard here, fill out Max Kreitz's name. So eight to one Panthers. We'll stay here. Talk about what we've seen so far. Another four-run inning, just like they had in the first. dominant streak. Got a couple singles. Uh, one of those reached on an error. Uh, then that triple and driving in three runs. So a little bit different than that first game between these two teams. That close matchup. This one has broken out early. Eight to one. And the 
Panther should be able to hold that top spot. Of course, a long way to go in this game. Seven innings, of course, by UIL rules. It looks like Kreitz just about ready to go. This is Carson Riley, another player who's been on base twice, the catcher. Pair of singles, first and second inning, now up in the third, and that first pitch from Kreitz gets away from Sisson, and Logan Dyer casually walks across the plate now, nine to one. So now bases have emptied. So at least if you're Max Kreitz, you can just work from scratch. Cedar Park, because there's a swing there, one and one. Cedar Park with a 5-1 lead over Eastview. So that's another top team in this district who's got an early lead. That one's fouled away. Get some other scores. I think that's the only concurrent game in this district happening right now. And there's a drive into center field, and the right fielder, Seaman, will come on and catch it for the first out. So that's good for Max Kreitz's confidence, the junior. And those, look at that scoreboard. And that's nine runs on seven hits for the Panthers, but those four errors have come at bad times for the Lions defense. Cash Durkin up. Swings and misses. First inning, he had that ground ball that hit the runner and then popped out in the second. That one in the dirt, one and one, one out. Action pack already filling up the old scorecard here. That nine to one score, and that's, that's a good rip. But it's straight at Seaman, who makes a pretty good play. Easy to misjudge those kind of balls. Of course, we talked about the wind as well. And those fly balls are hit with a little bit more power. You can cut through the wind a bit better. Cade Neunschwander. Up to bat. A little bit of a different situation than previous innings. Swing and a miss here. Of course, he's got two walks. Really making his opposite number work. The pitcher batting cleanup here. Yeah, that's a little tiny foul tip there. Uh, oh, really? oh. Thought I heard. Thought I heard the bat. The scoreboard's got a one and one. Just waiting on the signal here from home plate umpire. And. There's two strikes now. And a little pop, and that'll drop. Nice piece of hitting by Neuenschwander. And he's on for the third time. And like we've seen before, the pitcher will come out of the game. And Colton Rutherford, sophomore, will come in for him. And they certainly have that down. Sean Parsons pinch runs. For Carson Riley and then Colton Rutherford. Oops. Good runs for Caden. New inch wander. So, first time Kreitz has seen a man on here, and that's a big rip there from DeMars in the center field. But Salazar makes the play, and Kreitz gets out of the inning with very little damage, but Panthers extend the big lead. And now we're up 9-1 to one going to the bottom of third here on Five Sports.
And welcome back here to the Diamond at Leander. All right. And the home team Leander Lions trailing visiting Liberty Hill Panthers 9 to 1. Caden Wheatley, leadoff batter here, bottom of the third against Neuenschwander. Watch that one go low. Of course, Wheatley had worked a, a full count at the end of the second inning there, but then Adam Salazar was thrown out by Neuenschwander over at first base. The final out of the inning, so Wheatley back up. Fresh at bat and watch that one go by a little bit of frustration. We talked about the Panthers 2021 record. Newish Wanderers got that fast motion outside for the ball. Sure. The Leander Lions were a district. Were in the playoffs last year. And there's a pitch popped straight in the air. It's a play for Eller. He might have some wind going, but he makes a nice play. first out there. 2021 record 16 and 10 overall for the Lions. Of course that may be COVID related why that so few games but 11 and 3 in district and did make it to the by district round. So coach Matthew Grissom and company trying to get back there. First pitch fouled away, strike one. To talk about the fact that this was the last week of the regular season. We'll talk about the upcoming schedule. That one a little bit low, one and one. Pitch from Neuenschwander. Uh, strike really aggressive on that fastball. Cade Neuenschwander not afraid to attack these hitters. And now he's got that eight run lead, he can really afford to do that. He goes back at him with the breaking ball, fouled off. Thankfully that's the side where there are no cars parked. So we can, we can all feel safe that no car alarms going off. And that breaking ball was attacked really well by Andrew Buentello, who gets on base and you gotta we're gonna get back into the game. You gotta chop away. Can't happen all eight runs. Not gonna happen all in one swing of the bat. And Andrew Buentello on for the second time, second baseman. Now it's Jaron Cotton. Got on in the first inning on an error. Schwander goes right at him again with that strike. Buentello over at first. Low now. Righty versus righty here. Coach Grissom for the Lions, also in his 12th year, same as Coach Hutcherson. So, two experienced coaches. There's a cut right at the middle. Should be two. Steps on the bag. And throw to first goes long, so it's not quite... That was Neely over at short. Now batting number 18, Dylan Capers. And two out now for Dylan Capers. Who drew a walk in the first inning with a really good at bat. Big 6-4. Senior Riley makes a good play behind the plate. Capers. Of course, a returning starter, the big fella. Senior. Wonder if he'll be playing ball at the next level. Certainly got the physique for him. He also could be a basketball player. Wind blows across us 2-0. 3-0 oh. now. And maybe a strategy here from Neuenschwander is to not give Capers the pitch to hit. As he 
Six over at first. And I think we've got a balk call there on that move to first. New and Schwander a little bit confused. Coach Hutcherson's going to come out for an explanation. We did. I do believe that's the balk. Is the call. He does have a great move for a righty. Getting the ball over to first. But did not step off. That time around. Call was from, I believe, the second base umpire. Cedar Park's extended that lead at Eastview 8-2. for New and Schwander is a strike. Capers, I think, knew it. Kind of wanted to swing. And three and one now. We'll see if it gives him another pitch in the zone. And he does, and Capers rips it down the line. It'll be foul, but you see the power. When he's swinging, there's a lot of power there. That's the second ball we've seen. The, the other one in the first inning was opposite field. Didn't get over the fence, but got all the way to the fence. And that one down the line again. Seems like when you go down that left field line tonight, you're kind of fighting with the wind. And a full count. Pitch fouled away by Capers. Another good at bat by the big fella. Second here for the Leander Lions. Which Wander steps off. It, it's quite a battle every time Capers comes to the plate. That's Buentello at second. With that single and then advanced on the ball call. Capers cuts at that one and that'll go foul as well. There are some cars out there. Hope, hopefully, those cars are okay. Capers making New and work. He'll go for the second. Another great play. Just safe. Cade New and is so clever with his pickoff plays. I think Coach Grissom's going to maybe have a word with his guys about just staying alert. Again, good job by the fielders as well. New and with the pitch. And that'll be high. And Dylan Capers will get on again with the walk. Second walk of the game for Capers, so obviously the threat is Capers, but if you just walk in, maybe you limit the damage. And here's Lucas Flores, who struck out in the first. He's had sort of a frustrating night. A couple grounders over to third have been tough for him to handle. He'll swing away at that one, and that one hits the pole that the floodlight's on comes right back onto the field. Oh, one now. Luis Flores. Another good cut, and that one goes foul. Another returning starter, senior. You can tell, certainly tell that the senior's frustrated. That was night fielding has gone. Chance here to for some redemption. But he's behind in the count. 0-2. Two. two outs, two men on. And a good cut there. That might get in the gap. And I think it does. It does. And misplayed there by Maxwell. Buentello scores. I mean, that is not Buentello. That's a pinch runner, number two. It's Jaron Cotton. Of course, grounded in that fielder's choice, but it is a run across for the Lions. Capers over to third. And just what 
Lucas Flores needed in his night. Grounder on the first pitch and an, and an issue there at short and Caper scores. And Damian Stout, the DH, will get an RBI single. <laughs> Just about everything happening in this game. Another run across here. So we'll get that score updated. Nine to three. So error will be credited to Neely over at short. As Capers comes across, and now Caden Sisson, catcher, up with two men on, two out, and inside for a ball. So a couple runs here for the Lions. The hit by Flores and, and the grounder by Stout, which was too hard for Neely to handle. And there's a good pitch there, one and one out from New Wander. Popped out in the second. Did Sisson, and of course, he's had a lot of action behind the plate. A couple balls of pass him right up the middle, and a good play there by Eller. Might have got past him through the middle, but a couple runs for the Lions, making it a bit more interesting here. End of the third inning, 9-3 Panthers on Vibe Sports. back here on Vibe Live. My name is Adam Mueller. Don't know if I mentioned that yet. We're already top of the fourth. Trent Eller, who we saw just make that good defensive play, and who also led off the previous inning, will lead off this one. We had all nine batters come to bat in the top of the third. Obviously, the Panthers would love for that to happen as well. And pitch hits Eller for the second time in this game. A different, different pitcher. This is Max Kreitz, not, not Harrison Thayer. But Trent Eller's had taken a few in the back. And now it's Garrett Neely who will come to bat. He flew out in the first. And single in the third, did get all the way around and scored on that. Uh, bases clearing triple by Logan Dyer. One of those two bases clearing hits for the Panthers that really opened this game up. And that's in there for a strike. Wind really blowing now. You can see the dirt from home plate blowing across. Throws over to first, safe over there. Not, not everybody's got that great move that Caden Neuenschwander's got. <laughs> 0-1 pitch. 
pitch to Neely. There's another bunt foul. Now 0-2, we'll see if he goes back to that. I believe that's the second time in this game we've seen Neely go for the bunt with the man on. Max Kreitz. Get out of this. Ball popped right in the air. This will be difficult to play, and Seaman can't quite make the play. That's a combination of things. The wind's probably blowing that. It's also beat into the foul territory, but we've also got a righty up there, so I think the outfielder's generally a little bit shaded to their right, our left. As you can see, you see where Seaman's set up out there in right field. He's not close to the line really at all. Play over at first. Still safe. O2, Max Kreitz ahead in the count against Garrett Neely. That's Trent Eller over at first. He goes. Won't be a play at second. Salazar go there anyway, and it's a big mistake. Excuse me, that's Lucas Flores, who continues to have a difficult night at third. He just had to go to first there. Runner was already most of the way there, and Guantello was not even ready for a throw and just caught the ball behind the back. Both runners safe. And Flores thought maybe he had redeemed himself slightly there in the top half of the inning with that RBI hit. Another tough play for the senior third baseman. Now it's Jack Stavanoa with two men on. He will bunt. That's got some air on it. Play needs to be made here, and Sisson can't quite do it. Great diving attempt. Hope he's okay here. He's staying on his back. Uh, I think it's just out of your picture there. But this is concerning here. Senior catcher, you know, when you dive with all that gear, it can be really tough. He's back up, though. You can see him walking around now. Tough guy. District defensive MVP last year is Caden Sisson. So that is to tell you how, what kind of quality defense he has out some water for him. Just give him a moment. I think he'll stay in this game. Again, you, you diving with that catcher's gear is much more difficult than just diving in a normal jersey. And he's a tough kid and he's ready to go. That's good to see. And he'll take a few warm up pitches from Kreitz. Uh, umpire just making sure Pitcher's okay, and that's fair enough. 0-1 count right now to Jack Stabanoa, who struck out in the first. And, well, we talk about bunting. Got on base with a bunted single in the previous inning. Second base umpire there, making sure everybody's good to go. Two men on, no out. Max Kreitz in a little bit of a bind. Of course, it hasn't been completely his fault. Did hit Trent Eller over at second, but Garrett Neely rounded the ball over to Lucas Flores at third, and Flores went to second on a hit-and-run situation. Buentello not ready for it. No out. Looked like he did swing. And, of course, don't have the luxury of having four umpires in this game. So you pretty much go with the home plate umpire's decision there. Over, although he did check in with his counterpart at second. 1-1 one, one pitch now to Stavano and fouls that one down the line. Made it all the way into the outfield. 
outfield and right field. That's just the wind carrying a bouncing ball. One and two now. And that wind just will not let up. I am just not getting a break here. I'm having to hold on to my nose tightly. And looks over there in second. Either middle infielder really was ready for a throw, but he looked over there anyway. All infielders pretty close to their respective bags here. Big gaps in between second base and the other base, and there's a big cut and strike three. And Jack Stapp, no, his second strikeout of the nine, a big out for Max Kreitz, because it is the first one of the inning. Now Chase Maxwell will come to the bat. It was the only Panther to not bat in that top half of the first, that four-run top of the first. Right off the second with a fly out, and then reach on an error in the third, and it would come all the way around to score on that play. Base is clear, triple by Dyer. Didn't go around there, 1-0. Went out. Top of the fourth here. And there's a little chopper. And you see Christ lose the hat. What a throw! And called out at first. Nice defensive play by Jack Max Kreitz. And again, the wind affecting a lot of that. He, first step he took off the mound, lost his cap. Still made a really good play. Of course, the runners do advance. And here is Logan Dyer. He's bad in each inning so far. Run single in the first, reached on error in the second. As that ball is low there. Had a bases clearing triple. Credit him with three RBIs there in the previous inning to really break this game open. Made it nine to one at that point. And swings and he's gonna get on base again. And this could be two runs. We should have a play at the plate. Throws a little bit wide. He will go to second. Sisson tried to make the play at second. Got past him, more aggressive base running. And he has gotten all the way to third again. Really star turn here for Logan Dyer. He's reached in every inning and now has five RBIs to his name. Carson Riley, who's benefited from his previous number, getting on bag every inning. He's got a pair of singles flew out in the previous inning. And first pitch was called to strike there. Again, Logan Dyer. Five RBI in this game. Wind continues to blow. Pitches a ball one and one. Eleven to three Panthers. They've really been dangerous at the plate every inning. Thayer got out of that difficult situation. I believe base is loaded situation in the second. This one's popped out. It's gonna be a difficult play with the wind though. And Seaman makes a nice play. And that'll end the inning. So two more across for the Panthers. Not making it any easier for the Lions. And the score here, Liberty Hill 11, Leander 3. You're watching Five Sports.
forth. Yeah, I've seen plenty of action in this one. Liberty Hill up 11 to 3. Nate Seaman, right fielder, will lead off the fourth for the Lions. Rounded out in the second inning. New Schwander sort of beginning into a rhythm. Get, get up a couple runs in that previous inning. Not unhittable. Of course, that's three runs on four hits. For the Lions, they also have those four errors. Ben Cosley, 11 runs on nine hits, two errors. For the Panthers, it's been a tough, tough night to be a fielder, tough night to be an outfielder. Certainly, that wind is blowing. I, I heard, and that's a strikeout looking for Neuenschwander. On Seaman. Adam Salazar. Up to, up to the plate. And, you know, I think his name is not marked correctly on the lineup. I think that's Aiden Salazar. Way to say that name. First pitch of ball. He was hit by a pitch in the second inning. Outside ball two. And then quite promptly thrown out at first by that Munchwander pickoff play. Big cut on the fastball. Munchwander. One now. And there's a good cut over to second. Eller makes the play to Durkin, and something we haven't seen a whole lot tonight, just a routine ground ball play. Two out now. New Schwander might be getting in a in a rhythm now. Here's Caden Wheatley, left fielder, top of the lineup. Did have a single, leadoff single in the bottom of the first. And would get around and score. And flew out in the third. Going to get something going here. The Lions down big here, 11 to 3. It's windy night here in Leander, Texas. District 25 5A matchup last week of the season. We'll go over those schedules for both teams. Next half of the inning, 3 and 1 now from New Inchwander. but not cold temperature now. And there's a strike, full count now. Two outs. Two Wheatley swings and misses for Moonswander with a much more routine ending than we've seen in this game. He gets out of that one. We will head to the fifth. The Free Hill Panthers still with that 11-3 lead here on Vibe Sports.
uh, fairly straightforward for the Panthers upcoming schedule. They'll be at Georgetown on Tuesday. And then in a week's time, they'll be back home. Oh, there's a strike there from Kreitz. Back home against Glenn. That's Friday, April 29th. And in fact, I will be there for that game as well. Oh, one pitch here from Max Kreitz. Pitching to Cash Durkin. out in this game. Just that strange grounder in that first inning hit the runner. He got to stay on first. The runner was out. And there's a good cut down the line. It's going to fade foul. Still one and two. So just those two district games left for the Panthers. Of course, the game against Georgetown is big because that is one of those teams that they are tied with first place atop this district with. It's a team they've already beaten. That's grounder up the middle and through. That'll be a single for Durkin. Gets on base. Cade Neuenschwander will come up. He's reached every time. Two walks, single. He's pitching in this game as well. Durkin over there at there. This one's fading off to the right. Siemens had some tough plays, and it's aggressive base running. Should have a play here at second. But safe is Durkin and more. Really good base running by the Panthers. That ball fading into the corner for Seaman, who's had an active night down there in that corner. One out now. Over to Mars. Coming to the plate. Had that big three RBI double in the top of the first inning. Really sort of started this landslide for the Panthers. Does have a strikeout and a foul out as well. And what's going on here. Kreitz went over to first and the ball got past Capers and a run scores. And not sure what what happened there. Strange sequence there. Not sure if Kreitz Thought the runner was still at first, but ball went over Caper's heads, and the runner scored from second. Really strange one now, 12-3. And here's the pop-up from Colby DeMars. Should be fielded over there at second by Buentello, he does. Outs here for Trent Eller. Of course, that 10 run rule. If Panthers get another run, it'll be 13 to 3, and they will call this game, so it could be finished before seven innings, but nobody on now here for Eller. Set an action packed, action packed night. He's been hit by a pitch twice. Also reached on an error. So, gonna do the best he can here. Big swing and a miss. One and two now to Eller, second baseman for the Panthers. Trent Eller, like his teammate Garrett Neely, committed to UT Dallas. Play baseball. Senior.
scored a run in the fourth inning after being hit by a pitch. Did swing at that one, and that is a strikeout. So get through the top half of the fifth. Another run on the board for the Panthers. They now lead 12 to 3. You're watching Five Sports. My name is Adam Mueller, and bottom half of this inning, and Andrew Brontello swings at that one. Another play at short, and he is going to be safe over there. As Neely's had trouble with a few grounders over there, and now three errors for the Panthers. Cotton now reached on an error. Speaking of errors in the first inning, and grounded out, grounded into a fielder's choice in the third, and did come around and score in that third inning. Montello has been on base each time he's been up. RBI double in the first, a couple of singles. Of course, the second one came on an error. That one driven straight away center. And a good play there by Jack Savanoa. And now it's the big fella. We do have run rule and the other game in this district Cedar Park 15 Eastview 2 so we do know that Cedar Park has gotten their ninth win of district play Liberty Hill looks set to get their ninth win here Leander Lions schedule they actually have three games they'll they'll be back here tomorrow in non-district big cut by capers and that's the skill that he has there. Count him on base three times as well. Two walks. And a single as we finally get to see him swing the bat. He's a pretty exciting player. Lucas Flores now to the plate. As I said, quick turnaround for the Lions. They're yeah, sort of an interestingly placed non-district game at 12 here tomorrow. As Flores watches that one go low. Good play by Carson Riley. And their final two district games, Tuesday at Glen, and then they finish Friday against Eastview. Here at the Diamond at Leander. It's a good pitch there, one and one. Snow and Schwander, a little bit of a bind here. It's a good cut. That should 
get out of the stadium there, it does. I think it made contact with the pole out there as well. Flores, so it's sort of a mixed night. A strikeout in the first and then an RBI single in that third inning. Again, he's had those issues over at third, but the senior's trying to turn it around with the on the offensive end, just a little bit outside. Riley tried to frame it. Professional catcher, catching move right there. Two two now to Flores. Wonder looks over at second. A good cut there by Flores. Boy, he jumped on that. And Kobe Demars makes a good play. Runner will advance from second. Again, hard thing to. When the ball's hit like that, it's hard to judge. And DeMars did a good job of not coming inside on that ball. It's really easy to misjudge those balls and run in. And he didn't. He kept his feet planted and then made a good play. And it looks like Coach Hutcherson's going to take Neuenschwander out of this game. And he gets a big hand from the Panthers crowd. Number 15. Come into pitch. And that is CJ Sherburn. And he's a senior, so we go from junior to senior here. And Nunschwander did what he had to do, a good outing. The junior pitcher. And Sherburn comes in. The man on, two out. Here, bottom of the fifth. And Liberty Hill Panthers holding that big lead. Hill does have five commitments already to play college baseball. We talked about Neely and Eller going to UT Dallas. Cash Durkin committed to Blinn College here in Texas. Jack Stavanoa committed to Texas A&M, Texarkana. And then Cole Jefferson, who we actually haven't seen in this game, pitcher, committed to Johns Hopkins. So, really good for those senior players. We're just about ready to go here. As Damien Stout, DH, comes in the game. Uh, home plate over, just checking, I think, what Sherburn's got on his wrist. It's just a little play card. Obligated to check that. There's a strike in there from Sherburn. Wentello over there at third. We've got a pinch runner at first. Almost hit him there. One and one. Just checking that number of that pinch runner. Can't quite see it. Looks like it might be Jamie Williams, number 12. We can get confirmation on that. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Certainly not 6-4 Dylan Capers over there at first base. One and two now, two out. Second pitch 
future of this game for the Panthers. Low, now full. Three and two, two out. Runners on the corners. For Damien Stout. In that first inning, pounded into a big double play. And then got on base. In that third inning, actually. A RBI single, good cut there. And you know what it is? It is Dylan Capers. Big number 18 still over there at first, just didn't. Just didn't look like him. Full count now, two out. Another good cut on that off speed. From Sherburn. I like this a lot. Caden Sisson, the catcher, is on deck, but he's got his he's got his leg pads still on because there's two outs and may not get in the game. And this one should drop in center field, and it does. One run will score. Capers is going to go to third, and I don't know. That was a good piece of base running there by Damian Stout. No one was covering second. The ball just got past the, the bag out there. But he makes a good heads up play. And Caden Sisson's got to take the pads off and come to bat. One now. Just hit it. Which is that one, one and one. Hasn't gotten on base yet. As the star catcher for the Lions. Pop out and a ground out. That's in the second and third. Looking to make some more damage here. Fouls that one back. Of course, we're a little bit farther from that run rule. Now with that run across. There's a swing and a miss, and he will be tagged just in case. So one run across for the Lions, but still a long way to go here. 12-4 Liberty Hill here on Vibe Sports.
are back here at the Diamond at Leander. My name is Adam Mueller. We will go top six now. Panthers with that 12 to 4 lead. That's the Liberty Hill Panthers against the Leander Lions, the home team. We did have a defensive switch. As now pop up there. The second baseman. Wentella, who makes the play. That was Garrett Neely. He swung at that first pitch. It is at third base. Evan Yoder, and the senior number three, has come in. For Lucas Flores. In there for a strike now. So Jack Stavanoa, center fielder, a pair of strikeouts, and a bunt single for Jack. Big cut over there at first, and Capers can't handle it. And Stavanoa's on base for the second time. seen the dominance of the Panthers tonight and you, it's almost any wonder that they've lost in all this season. A couple times to Cedar Park and then once to Rouse. Big cut there from number 22. A new player checking in this game. This is Tyler Williams, senior outfielder. in for Chase Maxwell. And you start to get the pencil out and pencil in all the substitutions here. Stavanoa over there at first. One out, one two count now. Max Kreitz still pitching for the Lions here at the top of the sixth inning. Fouls are back. Kreitz looks over to first and delivers a pitch off speed too high. 2-2 two -two now to Tyler Williams. Hutcherson and Coach Grissom breaking out some substitutions here late in this game, as you'd expect. Throws over there to first. He is safe, though. And they're swinging a miss. Strike three. Two out now. And Logan Dyer will come to the plate now. Mr. Dangerous here. Fifth inning was the first inning he did not have an at-bat. And of course, that meant the first inning that he didn't get on base. You could uh, write an essay about all the hits he's had in this game. One single in the first, came around to score. Reached on an error in the second. And then a big triple. In the top of the third, scored three runs. They got those three RBIs, and they got two RBIs in the fourth. Also off a triple. Well, it was a double. And then some good base running after an error made it a triple. So he's been on base all four of his at-bats. See if he can make it five. That's driven into center field. And center fielder there, Salazar, makes the play. And that'll be it for the sixth there and we will head to the bottom of the sixth here still Liberty Hill Panthers for Leander Lions
here at the Diamond at Leander with four substitutions here. And Chance Langang, the senior, has come into the game. Lefty watches a strike from Sherburn, who's still pitching. Cade Neuenschwander, Neuenschwander, excuse me, is right there at third. He is coming to the game for Maldonado. Again, get your get your scorecards out. As Lane Gang comes in, big cut, still 0-2. Sherburn stays in to pitch. That's a good cut from Langang. And Stavanoa drifts under that. And everybody getting an opportunity now. This is Thomas Fowler. Pinch hitting. One low from Sherburn. Fowler, the junior. Again, low there. Looks, looks similar. Height advantage, just listed at 6'2", not quite. Dylan Caper, 6'4", another good cut there. Over to Short, and Eller makes the play over to Durkin. And we are back to the top now with Caden Wheatley. Opened up bottom of the first with a single and then came across the score in the first inning. Flied out in the third, struck out in the fourth. And there's a strike from Sherburn. A little bit chilly now. A one pitch from Sherburn. A little bit low. One and one. Other scores from around Austin. Vandergrift eight. Hutto one. A big swing and a miss. I think it's currently the only game going on with us. 1-2 from Sherburn, who looks to be in rhythm, two out. Pitch a bit low, two and two now. And that ball popped straight in the air. Look at the wind, just drag that one over, but not enough for Durkin not to make the play. And that'll do it. One, two, three. Bottom of the six, we will go to the seventh, still 12 to four.
Stripe Sports, Liberty Hill Panthers, Leander Lions here in Leander. Of the four, the score, we do have a new pitcher for the Lions. This is senior number 20, Gabe Millard. It's the point in the game when you get lots of substitutions. We also have number 14, Daniel Hernandez, who's now catching. And number nine, Sam Pangarelli over at first. So, a few substitutions for Coach Grissom. 12 runs on 11 hits and three errors for the Panthers. Four runs on six hits and those four errors for the Lions. This is Carson Riley watches this one go inside. Riley's got a couple singles and a couple flyouts. Uniform scorecard for him in this game. Looks at a strike, one and one. A windy and somewhat chilly night now here at the Diamond at Leander. Two one now. Got these flags up here. Above the stands, they've just been blowing and blowing and blowing. Since that one foul down the line, the wind really carries that one. For Riley now, tune two. Pitch from Gabe Mallard ripped out into left field. And Carson Riley's got a single and misplayed out there by Wheatley. And he will go to second. Some mental errors from the Lions in this game. It really cost them. You know, it's tough in a game like this to keep your head up, but Gonna make the fundamental plays. We do a pinch runner here. In for Riley. Not sure if it's the normal one we've gotten used to, Sean Parsons. In this game. Cash Durkin up. Bad for his fifth at bat for the Panthers. He's got a couple singles. out in a fly out. Of course, that first single in the top house of the first inning hit the pinch runner. Pinch runner's now at second, and he rips that one out in the left field. And this will score a run. He'll stop it first. That's number 25, Lane Rabarski, the junior pitcher. Get some time on the base pass. So it's a single and an RBI for Cash Durkin. And this will be Cade Neuenschwander. Who has now at the game at third base, started the game as a pitcher. And had a really nice outing. And that pitch is behind him, didn't hit him. But Durkin will advance the second and some control issues for Mallard here. Again, just one run away here from the run rule. Low and low, two and one now. And we pick out the balk there. So Durkin will advance to third. Either that was unchallenged. He sort of trotted over there, so I think the walk was called. Mallard with the pitch, popped up deep, and Seaman's got another tough play, and it should score the runner here. 
And it does. Durkin walks across 14 to 4. And we have reached that 10 run advantage, but we are here in the last inning, so it does not apply. Mars now. To bat against Mallard. Strike called. One and one. Demars just got one hit, but it's that three three RBI double in the first inning. Really started off the scoring for this Panther team. Been in right field. Panthers tonight. It's been sort of an action area. That one's popped straight up. Might stay in the stadium here. Just out. You can hear the tin as it hits something right behind the stands. Close as the fans got it to a foul ball in this game. So now two and two. Two to Mars. Yeah, swings it up. Nasty change up. Outside, two out now. And now, another substitution here. It's number four, Will Snell. Senior pitcher. Into the game. Got a good hand in the Panthers crowd. Rocking the high sock, swinging a miss. Not sure how many at bats he gets in the course of the season. Pitch from Mallard. It's low one and one. from Mallard. Change up with the swing and a miss there. One and two, two out. Just looking over there at the softball field, see if that game's over. Another swing and a miss there. You can tell he maybe doesn't get that many at-bats there. Mallard gets through the inning. 14 to four, we will have a bottom half here. Panthers extend that lead here on Vibe Sports. And welcome back to the Diamond at Leander. My name is Adam Mueller. I hope you have enjoyed the game tonight as we enter the bottom half of the seventh. We expect to see more at bats from some new Lions players here. Looks like Andrew Butello is going to come up for his fourth at bat here. And it's really been the Right spot in this Lions lineup. RBI double in the first and a pair of singles in the third and fifth. He is three for three. And there's a good rip over to second. It's a good play over there by Eller and the throw is a little bit offline. And he 
did not tag. I was waiting for a signal there, never got it. And so, Portella gets on for the fourth time. And we will see Jaron Cotton for the fourth time as well. Reach on air in the first, rounded into fielder's choice and scored in the third. And then flew out in the fifth. Sherburn checks first and fires a ball. Again, UIL rules, seven inning game. Here, fouled away. So be the final inning here for the Lions. So that wind just continues to blow. From our left to our right here. And there's a strike. Two. Jaron Cotton, Butella over there at first, and you could see he was jammed on that pitch. A couple beautiful breaking balls. And there's a strike. Yeah, we won't see Capers for a fourth time. Instead, it's Sam Piangirelli, the senior, with Buntello. At first, and a good hit right up the middle, and a nice play by Eller, the second baseman. Take both. Both balls over to the Eller in this inning have been tough to handle, but he's made good plays on both of them, and that would have been. Uh, single there. And if there had not been a man on first, he shaded over to second because of the man on first. This is Evan Yoder now. Number three. Came in the game at third base for Flores. Kind of a smaller strike zone for Yoder. He's listed at 5'5", 130, the senior, so pretty much the exact opposite of Dylan Capers. And here's a big cut on that really effective breaking pitch from Sherburn. Two and one now, two out. 14 to four Panthers Looking for that final out. And fouled off. Two and two now. Montello at first. Wind just blows and blows and blows. Some fans starting to head out. Pitch in there for strike three. And that will be it for this one. Panthers with a big victory here. I think we thought maybe we'd get a bit of a better game tonight, but big hits from the beginning. Lots of runs and doing enough on the defensive end. So the Panthers will hold on to that district lead. Of course, as we know, they'll share it with Cedar Park We'll find out if they'll share it with Georgetown and Rouse as well. And Leander Lions now need a lot to happen for them to have a chance at the playoffs. But a good effort by those boys as well. And we've had a good time tonight. Hope you've enjoyed it on this windy evening here. My name is Adam Mueller. This is High School Baseball on Flow Sports.